Hello, I'm Alfred Turner, producer for Walter Edgar's Journal, a supporter of the SIMS initiatives. The initiatives is a digital humanities project of the University of South Carolina Libraries, funded in part by a generous grant from the Watson Brown Foundation. In celebration of Halloween and to promote the site for the SIMS initiatives, we are reading one of SIMS ghost stories throughout the month of October. The story is called Grayling or Murder Will Out, and it is part of the author's short story collection called The Wigwam and the Cabin. Now at this point in the story where we find ourselves, James Grayling, while ruminating over Major Spencer's apparent disappearance, stays on his watch far too long and is suddenly interrupted by the disembodied voice of his friend. The voice continues to speak in part 11 of William Gilmore Sims' Grayling or Murder Will Out. The voice called him three times, James Grayling, James, James Grayling, before he could muster enough strength to answer. It was not courage he wanted, of that he was positive, for he felt sure, as he said, that something had gone wrong, and he was never more ready to fight in his life than at that moment, could he have commanded the physical capacity but his throat seemed dry to suffocation, his lips effectually sealed up as if with wax, and when he did answer, the sounds seemed as fine and soft as the whispers of some child just born. Oh, Major, is it you? Such, he thinks, were the words, the very words he made use of in reply, and the answer that he received was instantaneous, though the voice came from some little distance in the bay, and his voice he did not hear. He only knows what he meant to say. The answer was to this effect. It is, James. It is your own friend, Lionel Spencer, that speaks to you. Don't be alarmed when you see me. I have been shockingly murdered. James asserts that he tried to tell him that he would not be frightened, but his own voice was still a whisper, which he himself could scarcely hear. A moment after he had spoken, he heard something like a sudden breeze that rustled through the bay bushes at his feet, and his eyes were closed without his effort, and indeed in spite of himself. When he opened them, he saw Major Spencer standing at the edge of the bay about twenty steps from him. Though he stood in the shade of a thicket, and there was no light in the heavens save that of the stars, he was yet enabled to distinguish perfectly, and with great ease, every lineament of his friend's face. He looked very pale, and his garments were covered with blood, and James said that he strove very much to rise from the place where he sat and approach him. For in truth, said the lad, So far from feeling any fear, I felt nothing but fury in my heart, but I could not move a limb. My feet were fastened to the ground, my hands to my sides, and I could only bend forward and gasp. I felt as if I should have died with vexation that I could not rise, but a power which I could not resist made me motionless and almost speechless. I could only say, murdered. And that one word I believe I must have repeated a dozen times. Yes, murdered. Murdered by the Scotchman who slept with us at your fire the night before last. James, I look to you to have the murderer brought to justice. James, do you hear me, James? These, said James, I think were the very words, or near about the very words that I heard, and I tried to ask the Major to tell me how it was and how I could do what he required, but I didn't hear myself speak, though it would appear that he did, for almost immediately after I had tried to speak what I wished to say, he answered me just as if I had said it. He told me that the Scotchman had waylaid, killed, and hidden him in that very bay. 
that his murderer had gone to Charleston, and that if I made haste to town, I would find him in the Falmouth packet, which he was then lying in the harbor, which was then lying in the harbor and ready to sail for England. He farther said that everything depended on my making haste, that I must reach town by tomorrow night if I wanted to be in season and go right on board the vessel and charge the criminal with the deed. Do not be afraid, he said when he had finished. Be afraid of nothing, James, for God will help and strengthen you to the end. This has been part 11 of William Gilmore Sims' Grayling or Murder Will Out. I hope you will tune in next time for another section of this strange tale. If you would like to read the full text of the story or any of the many other works we have available, simply visit the Sims Initiative's website at sims.library.sc.edu. That's S-I-M-M-S dot library dot S-C dot E-D-U. Until then, Happy Halloween.